Hello friends, welcome back to Raju Notes channel, your weekly current affairs updates and analysis. And if you are a student of either UPSC, Civils, SSB Bank or just having a general um, uh, quest for knowledge or information what is going around the world, I think this is the place where you should be. And before I start, may I please request you to subscribe to my channel. It's a kind of encourage for my, uh, encouragement for me and uh, it'll help me connect to more and more people and maybe someone gets benefited out of this well uh, today we will do the analysis and rather the updates from 20 march to 27th of march well this week has been uh, there are some international events which have caught our attention but just before we start the joint military exercise between india and seychelles which is given by the name as uh, Lemitite 2022 uh, has uh, rather begun. It has begun from 22nd and it will carry on till 31st of March 2022. Uh, Indian Army, I think a platoon strength is uh, participating in this event and it is a necessary thing for both the countries to um, rather put a check on the Chinese um, uh, strangle or the Chinese shipping lanes. Uh, uh, I like what we had discussed in the previous update. Now the uh, Ukrainian president Zelensky is rather claiming that that the NATO is in maybe afraid of Russia, or and now he has gone to that extent of saying now he is daring rather NATO to say whether they are accepting us or not accepting us because we we find all this shamozal happening because one somebody had a belief on somebody and it ultimately did not turn out well russia thought that it could end, end this uh, conflict in just about three or four days but it was to, it's all almost a month now we know that conflicts have started in the month of february and it is still not going russia today announced that it has finished first phase and it is now going for a second phase so well i must say losses of life on from the both sides are not actually required but i think nothing can be done on that aspect as of now uh, i mean amidst this amidst our relations with russia and the way russia is bulldozing through uh, it was actually a disappointment for us wherein president of united states joe biden said that india has been somewhat shaky in terms of dealing with russian president vladimir putin's aggression well uh, I would like to take some time of yours to say that if you if you really notice, uh, uh, see uh, our India stand on the international front. I think India is now emerging as a world leader. Why I am saying so? Just if you are just noted down or just listen to me what I have to say. Like from 24th of February, Russian president had spoken to Prime Minister at least four times. Then Ukrainian president had spoken to uh, PM at least two times. And rather he in fact invoked Mahabharata and Gandhi while asking for help, taking examples from India. India was the only country which has evacuated about 14,000 people from the Ukraine without uh, corridors established between Ukraine and Russia. Then Russia offered the massive 25% uh, discount on the oil to India and India purchased oil at dirt cheap prices wherein the world is putting sanctions on Russian oil but India is purchasing the oil from, it has rather already purchased from the oil. So thing and uh, Initially, Joe Biden tried to bulldoze uh, his way into uh, India by saying that it is importing Russian oils. But then two days back, uh, two days back again, he backtracked that said that he says we understand India's economic compulsions. You see a superpower saying so. So it makes a difference. And now uh, Ministry of External Affairs has also uh, uh, rather hit back onto US saying that, you know, uh, they don't require uh, advice from US saying as to which oil to keep and which not to say. Again, a bold statement. Uh, we had also seen one of our BrahMos missile going and hitting in Pakistan without well without warhead. But you know, uh, Pakistan tried to get it to international stage, but but US declares that such malfunctions can be possible, and the entire world rather ignored this incident. Well, uh, again, we discussed on that that issue. We had uh, a sudden visit of uh, the Japanese Prime Minister uh, Fuyumo Kishida who went, came on to two short days trip uh, along with a big delegation. He signed for uh, about uh, 42 uh, US billion dollars. Then you had uh, the Chinese Foreign Minister Yang Ying who had come to India today. 
and he met the external affairs minister and he tried to say that everything is okay but look at the statement of coming from the external affairs minister he says nothing can be equal or nothing can be same between india and china till the time aggression is taking place and he has told it in very uncertain terms that he is not for this uh, photoshop visit and uh, we also know that uh, the uh, Israeli Prime Minister Neftali Bennett is due to visit uh, in the uh, next month. And uh, so if you see all these things are happening, why? Why? What is happening? India, why has India become so important all of a sudden for all the countries like all the superpowers, USA, Russia, China and you know, and they all want to know on to which side India is playing. So that means when somebody is looking for a player on their side, that means that player has got some value so that is what uh, i wanted to say if you are a, um, a student or taking any examination or interview please bear these these points in mind because india is trying to emerge as one of these superpowers it will if god willing it will happen very soon sorry to take uh, such a long update on this particular one let's quickly quickly go on to the next one uh, it's a uh, i don't know whether it's a good uh, decision or a bad decision the uh, central, all the central universities in India will have to admit their students to undergraduate course here, here upon based on a common university entrance test and it will not be based on 12th class marks. So uh, this rule will come into application from academic year 22 and 23. I don't know how, uh, what kind of reactions this, the student uh, fraternity will get. but. Let's see. I hope everything goes on well. Uh, the uh, common university entrance test will be conducted in 13 different languages. So that is a kind of a breather for the students. Okay. Uh, one more good thing for India. Uh, all the uh, pilgrimages which were being carried out till the Kailash Mansour over uh, Yatra was till date was being done through either Nepal or China. And we know that China used to always put some kind of restrictions or some kind of a things to to as to hamper this this uh, pilgrimage to this holy place. But now India is likely to open up a road from the uh, Pithoragad and it will straight away take to Mansarovar, thereby avoiding Nepal and China altogether. This was announced by the uh, Minister for Roads and Transportation, Mr. Nitin Gadkari. And this is likely to be finished by December 2023. So a great thing, I must say. Amidst all these tensions, uh, the three nations which are generally at either war or in a cold war, the Egypt, United Arab Emirates and Israel met for the first ever time for a three-way summit. I find this as an excellent world-changing uh, trend. I wish and pray that such meetings sh should bring out positivity and that region which is generally in a turmoil all the time should benefit from such kind of a uh, meets. Uh, Amidst all these things, uh, good news coming in for the India also, there was a Gulf Countries Investment Summit which has uh, which was held at Srinagar and the uh, the Gulf Countries Summit, uh, uh, the, rather that corporation companies which came, they had planned to invest a lot of money into Srinagar and make it into a real tourist hub with a lot of amenities. So anything is good. So again the question. Uh, in case if it is associated with what are the advantages of the article 370 being removed and how was it uh, how was the uh, particular uh, place developing so this can be added to that particular statement uh, again coming back to russia ukraine the president uh, vladimir putin uh, spokesperson dmitry peskov in a interview had said that russia is likely and will use nuclear weapons if it faces its existential threat that is basically putting a, a warning directly to United States of America and the European Union, which are trying to put in a lot of sanctions, stroke putting in the uh, man on the ground to fight against Russia. So I think uh, this is a point which is not to be ignored. What is the outcome of all this? We really, really don't know. Amidst all this, as we just discussed, uh, the Russia selling out oil at dirt cheap prices when the crisis is going on. Well, now one going a step ahead, now Putin has told the unfriendly countries who are trying to put sanction on them, but yet uh, taking fuel from him. He said that please pay for gas in rubles. Like we discussed, this is a very important topic. In case the world starts selling the gas 
for anything other than petrol uh, dollars then the superpower of one country goes off so and it is a speculation that india has it is a speculation i am not sure i might be wrong that india has purchased some of the oil in indian rupees oblique stroke ruble already so if the trade for oil happens not in dollars and in something then it is a alarm bell for the united states of america and maybe a new trend to the world now with putin saying that he is ready to sell it with only with rubles and also a later statement coming that he says he will send it for a cryptocurrency also that is russia is ready to sell the gas and oil in cryptocurrency well how how will this take on we don't know but for sure that the opec uh itself will be in question mark then we had just seen that uh, the Ch foreign minister of uh, china paid uh, a surprise visit first to taliban ruled afghanistan i don't know why he went there something certainly must have happened there some inputs which we will come to know shortly but thereafter on the return he came to india again very short halt india really not uh, giving him a not giving him a warm welcome rather a cold shoulder and in unequal terms had said that this doesn't mean all is well on the uh, northeastern and northern frontiers uh, our our southern neighbor sri lanka is amidst all this is going into a deeper and deeper economic crisis it is unable to manage the resources and people are blaming uh, the mahindra rajapaksha government and uh, it is if you if we are aware that 70% of the sri lankan economy is rather controlled by the rajapaksha family and because uh, all of them are in the ministers and they are accusing the government of uh, all these losses and the financial crisis which the country is going in people are trying to flee away from sri lanka and are taking uh, refuge into the uh, indian continent subcontinent and uh, india is trying to help uh, sri lanka in terms of a lot of loans and now it has also given fuel as the long term loan for sri lanka and uh, having sri lanka in an economic crisis is certainly not a good thing for india we want our neighbors to be uh, physically and economically strong uh, for good news for atmanirbhar and uh, but projects in india the hindustan aeronautical limited has introduced the aircraft called as hindustan 228 it is if you recollect if you see this photo it's uh, you will recollect it's a old kind of an aircraft but it's a 19 seater civil transportation aircraft which has got an excellent capabilities of either landing from a semi prepared or unpaved air strips so uh, and uh, it can uh, it really doesn't require airport kind of a facilities to put a uh, land and take off but it is a good rather if uh, if people can invest into this it is a good aircraft for the connecting the remote places and as of now the seater is 19 17 seater aircraft but uh, without toilets but if you put a toilet it turns into 17 seater but in any case uh, it can be a good aircraft and people are now showing interest to procure this for the udan scheme that is uday desh ka aam nagrik wala scheme uh last time we had discussed the financial bill of 2021 like the way, like the same way please understand what is a financial bill and this time the financial bill of 2022 has been passed in the lok sabha and this was actually approved in the lower house after accepting the 39 official amendments which were moved by the finance minister uh, mrs sinirmala sitaraman and this bill proposes to in, uh, introduce a new section of tax under virtual digital assets which we had already discussed and also the retrospective disallowance of the deduction of surcharges etc uh maybe in two days uh, from now we will know the prime minister of uh, pakistan uh, imran khan's fate whether he will continue to be serving as a prime minister or whether he will be thrown off he has certainly rubbed to the wrong face wrong faces of the uh, pakistani i must say uh, the armed forces uh, and he though he is described as puppet of armed forces but i think he has come out of the wrong way and now the opposition are all united to throw him off and there is a no confidence vote on 28th of march imran khan has also said that he will show the show of, show of strength in uh, uh, his capital city but we will have to wait and see uh, what is the fate of imran khan 
with the present corona status now flaring up again in china and and against the amidst the restrictions uh, in the china for travel and other things indian government and categorically the united uh, ugc universities grants commission has said that as per the present rule india does not recognize any online degree done in china once they ka finish and come back to india so any cadet any student any person taking an examination or pursuing something from china please be aware of this don't fall uh, into the trap of uh, doing a degree or something online of china and then uh, trying to get it recognized in india uh as we had already seen uh, the first as per russia now it says that it has finished the first phase of operations in ukraine and it is now going on to the second phase and second phase as per russian uh, top general he says now the uh, liberation of donbas is the second phase of the operation uh, this entire crisis i must say was unexpected russia was overconfident that it will can wrap up this operation in maybe 3 days 4 days but it has gone more than one month and also it has seen the world power able to do nothing and united nations is absolutely uh, nothing in front of this crisis it couldn't do anything well uh, that were the quick updates for this week and um, if you want more of such updates every week tune to me every sunday on my whatsapp channel uh, sorry on my youtube channel uh, called as raju notes and if you find that such uh, inputs are helpful to someone someone please do share this video link with them thank you very much the corona is not gone i'll still request you to wear your mask take care and stay safe